The Five Nights at Freddy's franchise is very big to say the least, and with all the games that has come out and the lore surrounding the Chuck E. Cheese style game, the film that released just last year gave fans even more lore to explore. It's there right there, it's physical, the actors can reach out and touch them, they can really be in the moment because we're in the moment right there with them. There's no pretending, there's no, there's no post, we're all there together creating that scene. Today we're going to take you behind the scenes of this film and show you how they put this film together, from actors preparing to how the set design was built and animatronics. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where fantasy and fun come to life. The production design team made the most amazing pizzeria come to life in a fully dimensional way. But before we get into more of these moments, today's trivia question, what year was the first Five Nights at Freddy's game released? Leave your answers in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. I've been jonesing, like really coveting an opportunity to get back into the horror genre. Getting a chance to work with Emma has been lovely. I literally, when I'm in that costume, I'm blind, and so I rely on her, like very few performances I've ever had in my life, to help me sort of craft this character on the fly. When it came to the story, the concept revolved around Josh Hutcherson's character staying in the control room, staring at the screen the entire time. So what they figured out was to have other characters roam around the set for the audience to see around the space. The scale of the space was so incredible and felt so maze-like, which gave us such great opportunities for moving in between the spaces with cameras. Outside of the security office, there's an employee of the month wall, um, and we've got some photos of a couple of faces that you might recognize if you're familiar with YouTubers who are big fans. We get to hear from Josh Hutcherson himself regarding the video game in the film and blending everything together. It's very intense and uh, you know we're trying to bring as much as that as possible into the filmmaking process as well. Mike is a guy that really has the weight of the world on his shoulders. He's trying to support his younger sister be a sort of a father figure while at the same time uh, dealing with his own personal trauma. Going into the animatronics, there is Freddy, Foxy, Mangle, Chica, and Bonnie to name a few. The video game did extremely well with the jump scares of the animatronics, making them as lifelike as possible for a video game. We want to make sure that the fans are getting what they want. So when we're designing, when we're building, when we're covering the costumes, when we're picking colors, designing the eyes, every single aspect, we make sure that we're staying as true to the original IP as we possibly can. Piper Rubio, who plays Abby in the film, even praised Emma and working with her in the overall picture coming to life. Working with Emma, she is the best director ever. <laughs> She creates a really collaborative set, which is great when what your character is going through is very stressful. And honestly, it's crazy to see how much progress technology has been upgraded these last few years to where this could be done. Lynn and company brought some lights. Um, we put on the low lighting and, and turned Freddie on and kind of had Freddie walk at camera. And I think all of us, Emma included and, and Lynn, and even us who had built Freddie kind of went, ooh, like, okay, wow. that works. Oh my God, not too close. <laughs> Whoa. Doing an interview with the actors who were in the animatronic suits for the film explain what it was like and how it worked. The most challenging thing about performing as Freddy Fazbear, it's different than just performing as an actor. You're not wearing a costume and performing. You're driving a suit. The suits aren't super heavy. The head's pretty heavy but um, a lot of times we are holding a certain attitude or a certain position for minutes and minutes on end, and that can get a little tiring. Matthew Lillard, who played Five Nights at Freddy's William Afton, the murderous engineer and restauranteur responsible for building FNAF's infamous animatronics, spoke about his portrayal and the fact that his kids convinced him to play the part. Yeah, I was kind of aware of it. I mean, my kids played, but, you know, I'm a big video game guy, but I never played it before. I, I got this call from my manager saying, you know, go meet this director, Emma Tammy, who's the director of the movie. And if you guys get along well, they're going to make you an offer. And I was like, 
It usually means the movie's pretty crappy. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. One of the decisions I made early on was to combine all of the rooms and the spaces within the set as one giant set. Normally we would break it up into different sections and you would have the set for the security office and you would have a separate set for the dining room. But I wanted everything to be connected. I wanted it to flow. Emma Tammy chimes in again on what elements of the game she brought to the film. With the adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's, you know going into it that the world is rich and incredible and frightening. There's a lot of bits and pieces that can move and shift, and so for a specific shot, you might have to go in and move an arm or move the ears just in the right position so that the camera angle is correct. While the new film is filled with jump scares, a lot of the deaths and violence happen off screen, which is surprising for a horror movie. In total, there are only two death scenes that actually occur completely on screen, but both are presented in a way where gore and blood are kept to a minimal amount. My process with Mike was really trying to find a way to make him and his story very grounded. Because the game has such fantastical elements, you know, blending those two worlds together is totally a challenge, but I think with Emma, they've really found a great way to make all those themes and styles kind of blend into one. I personally find it sometimes more fun and creative to figure out the way to show the thing without explicitly showing the thing or without graphically showing the thing, Tammy explained. It lets your mind go to even darker places sometimes than when you show all the gore in the guts. To make Foxy walk, for instance, takes six performers. We have one on the head, one on the face, one on the arms. We have two on the feet. And then we have one that runs the rig, which pushes up and down and allows Foxy to sort of tilt forward and move his body up and down. Before we close out the chapter here, we did want to talk about the future of this franchise. Judging by the success of not only the game, but the film, in January of last year, Cawthon, screenplay writer and storyteller, revealed that he has signed a three-picture deal. In the mall, the ice cream stand that we created, where Mike goes up and buys an ice cream in the very opening scene of the movie. That sign, we incorporated the rainbow character, which I think a lot of fans will, will recognize instantly. I think the film was important to be made because fans have been clamoring for it for a long time and I am thrilled to finally give them what they want. The director even touched on this when she was asked about it at one point. Building stories with these characters that I now feel really um, not just in love with, but invested in and, um, you know, would love to see where they go. Uh, I think in terms of the franchise, if we were lucky enough to be able to continue making more films, we would just really be excited to incorporate more elements of the lore that, you know, relate to game two, game three. And as far as the answer to our trivia question, it was in 2014 that the first FNAF video game was released. And from there, the rest is history with the success of this franchise, now that there is a three-picture deal in place. I have a helmet that's about 16 pounds, and I call it a helmet because it's full. I'm in there, and I don't really have any visibility whatsoever. You look at sort of your silhouette because you can't really see anything, and you can't really move your, your extremities. You get Welcome to Sparky's. We were lucky enough to have Matt Pat play the waiter in the diner. He's a huge Five Nights at Freddy's YouTuber and just nailed his part. But we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What did you think about all these moments and what are your hopes for the future of this franchise? It's been really fun to see the reactions of the people on set when we do the movements. And just hearing the reactions from people on that, I kind of, I really like it. <laughs> It's been a real eye-opening experience to have a different view of these kinds of animatronic characters. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys. The last day of production, we transformed the whole pizzeria into its heyday pizzeria state. And then we filled the whole space with kids. And it felt really alive in a, in a completely organic way. Prepare to have your mind blown.